Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are pleased to have V. Sridham with us today. He is going to give us a talk on the Sabha culture of Chennai. An engineering entrepreneur, columnist, historian, author of many books, and a heritage activist, all put together is V. Sridham. He has been the editor of Madras Musings and a secretary of the Music Academy. He is an organizer of heritage walks and tours and has authored any number of books. And his next book is on Chennai, a biography that is going to be released in November. I request Sri Ram to open the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, DC. Uh, thanks to Vani Mahal for having invited me to speak today. And uh, thanks to all of you for having come. In the Khalat Lavandi, in the Mariguru Dairima, Vedi Lavarde, or Pedi Vishya, Apna Uru Sabha culture, Uru talk, Privarading, Rubaway Uru. It's a very commendable thing that all of you have uh, come today to be a part of uh, this particular presentation. Nane Mathan, the poster of Pathu Nusha Adi Pet, a humorous talk of the important. It is the academy secretary, Illa the Kadatla humorous talk along Kuturu Klan. Ipo Vanda and the Mari talk Kurtam, Aditha Nemishame, Motta Kedas, WhatsApp, Elam, Paraka, Ingi Angi, even a pretty academy secretary are Kalam, even when they in the industry, when the Egatia Vesita, he deserves to resign immediately. It is only because academy does not have the guts to sack him in the Marilam for two. The, the modern day anonymous letter is the WhatsApp forward. So, uh, with that <laughs> background, I would like to begin the talk on the Sabha culture of uh, Chennai. So, the Sabha culture. So, split Can a Sabha be a culture? Does Sabha, does it deserve to be called a culture? In the Marina, there are interpretations. But the point is that the Sabha is a very integral aspect of our life. Of course, there are people who will say that it is only an integral aspect of some people's lives. That is okay, but it is still an integral part of our lives. And uh, we need to look at it. The very interestingly, the Sabha, it comes from a grouping of people. The word is does not have today, if you look at it, they will say a sabha is a cultural organization meant to foster the arts. But the original meaning of the sabha is just a group of people coming together. And what is very interesting is that Uttaramerur, which is not very far from uh, where we are in, in terms of geography. Uttaramiru is where we first find a definition of a group of people coming together. But they don't come together to foster the arts, they come to get together for administration. So that is one of the early examples of a sabha, Ur Sabha. Ur Sabha. Adi Mari Periya Puranam Lala Nabapatona, Nagara Sabha, and the, you know that period we find that the village elders or the town elders coming together is. Uh, established as a sabha. Thereafter, we we don't find history till the 19th century, you don't find instances of sabhas being formed for the fostering of the arts. Arts fostering was meant for the king, for the ruling class. They had to take care of patronage and they had to extend the patronage as a matter of duty in order to take care of the artists. This was the broad definition that we look at. This city called Chennai was a new development in the sense that while villages in Chennai have existed from time immemorial, we know all that, we don't need to go into that. But the arrival of the English in 1639 for the first time created what was a kingless city. There was a Governor who was an Englishman, our Carnatic music na ennan thiriya the the garanta Carnatic sangi dhamne solid ko matra shastriya sangi dhamne solid kala or sadir they would not have known of any of these things so there was no question 
of the king or the ruler extending any patronage to the arts. But what we find is that this was not a city of only Englishmen. In fact, in the 17th and 18th centuries, you find that there were only 40 English families living in Fort St. George. The rest of the city, which was all Indian, they evidently thrived for the art. They evidently craved for the arts. the artists participate feeling So the if the administration was not going to support the arts, who was next? If you look at the uh, 17th and the 18th century history, you find that the next most powerful community after the British in this new development called Madras or Chennai was this community known as the Dubash, the Dubash community. The Dubashes were the translators of the East India Company. They could speak two languages. Initially, they began speaking Portuguese on one side and Tamil and Telugu on the other side. And later, they learnt English and that is how they continued their transactions. They were very, very powerful individuals. As you can see, the administration ran on their translating capabilities. Now, if they, and because neither community knew the language of the other, these people were kings. So, they made a lot of money in the process. They built temples in order to perpetuate their memory. So, in the number one, the Georgetown Pakwala Ponona, Nariya Kovil Pakala, Ekam Ranatha Swami Kovil, in the Mari Chenna Chenna Keshava Permal Temple, Chenna Malik Malishwara Swami Kovil, Malikarjuna Swami Kovil. They made a trivial cane, but on a trivotis for a trivetris for a covil, the like. In the Yellow May, when the Dubash cut in a covil, they indicate the Dubash cut in a covil now, the Urmari Kujo, Tara Urmari, other as Tara Yerangi Dramari Pathi, Yellow or Renda, history a great penitenta. So if you go to Ganga, this were a covil in Pursavakam and ask the priests in a sad non worship, I will covil, I will worship, I will. Yar sonne the Raja Raja Sora and the Katina Kovila Kumida. Ade Mari, if you go to uh, in uh, Chulai, there is a Kovil, Chidambareshwara Swami Kovil. And we know that the Totikalai family built it in the 18th century. But Angapoi Paketa, they will say nothing doing. Raja Raja Sora, although Raja Raja Sora and Yepo Katina Paketa, Rendai Tango Versham Minari, Raja Raja Sora. So that is the kind of broad spectrum of history. It's very vague. Definition 2000. Anything in Chennai which is historic is considered to be 2000 or 2500 years old. It's a very respectable figure. Once you give that figure, nobody will question beyond that. The temple in Chindadripet, for instance, the Adi Keshava Permal, Adi Purishwara Swami Kovil, if you, uh, we all know that it was, it's documented in East India Company records as having been built in the 1730s. But now there is a long Stala Puranam which says that some Alvar came there and plucked flowers and that was therefore a Nandavanam. That Nandavanam was Nandanam which incidentally was a locality that got its name only in 1950s when Rajaji gave it its name. But Anda Nandavanam Mandi, Purkra Nandanat, Anda Inga Chidda Repet, Inga Nandanam, is a lava, we are Yojana Pandila, and a Kare or Piriya Kareya they create now. So all these temples were built by the Dubashas. And the, I'm not talking about the historic temples like Thiruvatriyur or Thirumailai or Thiruvallikeni. These are all truly ancient. But if you look at the East India Company temples, they all built by the Dubashes. The Dubashes invited musicians and dancers to come to the city and settle here. In the 19th century, you have a Sanskrit work which is incomplete called the Sarvadeva Vilasa. In the early 20th century, that is sometime in the 1930s, Dr. Raghavan edited and released the incomplete work as a book and wrote copious notes in it about all the historic references in this particular work. And when you look at it, it mentions several temples of the city. It, that is Thiruvalli Keni Kovil mentioned. I, the, the Mailapur temple is not mentioned, but it talks about a couple of temples in Georgetown. And then it talks about the Nungambaka Magasthishwara temple. Then it has the names of several Dubashes and businessmen. It talks about uh, Manali Muthu Krishna Mudali. Then it talks about Manali Venkata Krishna Mudali, his son. It talks about Devaraya Mudali, who was living in uh, Devanayaka, who was living in uh, Nungambakam. So these are all names that it mentions. It also mentions the names of musicians who were in the retinue of these Dubashes. So it talks about the Guru of Tyagaraja coming here 
and being welcomed in procession on an elephant. Then it talks about Pallavi Dharsami Ayer having come here and lived under the patronage of a Dubash. So we know that at that time, the musicians and the dancers, it mentions three women by name, Manga, Natsiar and Veera. These were all courtesans attached to the Dubashes and it says these were all very talented, skilled uh, women who were performing in the city. And it talks about how in various coconut groves that the Dubashes owned, and in temples, it was customary for the merchants to meet and for musicians and dancers to entertain them with music, poets to come and recite their poetry. So, this is a Sanskrit reference, Sarvadeva Vilasa. Similarly, if you look at the work of the diaries of Anandaranga Pillai in Pondicherry, the very interesting that in the 18th century you had a Dubash, Anandaranga Pillai, who was duplexes Dubash in Pondicherry, and he has written a diary. Every day of his working life as a Dubash in Tamil, it is very painful to read because of the amount of detail that he goes into. But if you have the patience, I have not read more than three of the 12 volumes. I'm still, you know, in the process of reading them. It is just a fascinating account of life in Pondicherry under the French. It is also a very unusual Indian account of East India Company accounts. If you read the East India Company accounts, the British were the most honest people. They were so good and they were so caring and they came here only to uplift this third rate degraded community of Indians. And the Indians were all evil. We all grew up reading that history. So most of us, we think about our rulers as evil people and even now you will find that the British officers are honest. The so-called honest British officers They were as corrupt as we were and as we are and as we will continue to be. The whole world is as corrupt as we are, as we were, as we will continue to be. Let us not flagellate and beat ourselves. The so-called international ratings of most corrupt nation, least corrupt nation and all is only a relative scale. All human beings are greedy by nature. Let us not forget it, including me. And therefore, the point is that money was being made left, right and centre. So, when you read Ananda Rangapillai's diaries, you come across plenty of references of so, he has got a garden outside Pondicherry where he is taking his friends. He even mentions that somebody composed an entire poem on him and they performed it as a dance drama. And he went there and he sat and he watched it. So, Arunachala Kavi is supposed to have come to Madras and then he is supposed to have come and composed on some of the Dubashas over here. Those verses are still available with us. And therefore, we know that that is how the first records of performances in private locations, the houses of the rich, the gardens of the rich and public performances were invariably in the temples. So, this is the first generation of performances in Chennai. We are talking about the 18th century. In the 19th century, the Dubashes have come down in power. They are no longer what they were because 1857, the mutiny, the British Raj has taken over. The Vashis have become professionals. They have become marketing agents for various British companies in Madras. Their earning skills have come down. But there is a new class of Indian professionals which is coming up. Vakil, the lawyer is the first, inevitably, you know, in history, if you look at it, first instance of an Indian professional, there was the lawyer. Then you've got the doctors. Then you've got the accountants. Then you've got the telegraph operators. Novelty. And the Khalid, the Mount Venugopala Pillai, he owned the entire property where the music academy stands today. That was his house because he was the first Indian to become the telegraph operator for the city of Madras. So, he grew up very over skill. So, he must have had a good salary. He must have become a well-to-do person. So, that kind of money was coming in. But these were not as rich as the Dubashas had once been. So, a few of them would get together. And they would then invite musicians and dancers to come and perform. That is how we find the first examples of a sabha coming into existence in the city. 
அதுக்கு முன்னாடி golden jubilee of queen victoria's reign there was a pune gayan samaj which still exists incidentally in pune and the secretary of that samaj his name was balwant trimbak sarasra bude he was transferred to madras by the madras railway company and he came here to live and he decided that he would start a sabha here called the madras gayan samaj so in the in 1887 he creates this sabha and then the raja of vijayanagaram gives him money on the condition that it should be named madras jubilee gayan samaj in commemoration of queen victoria's golden jubilee so therefore the sabha gets the name madras jubilee gayan samaj it is really the first sabha of the city and it operates from the pachayapas college building which still stands on nsc bose road if you go upstairs you will find a beautiful uh, hall which was once an oratory high ceilings and in 1887 there would have been no traffic no noise on nsc bose road they would have kept all the doors and windows open and they would have had wonderful music performances we have a document which is the proceedings of the madras jubilee gayan samaj for 1887 1888 1889 it gives you the names of musicians whom we are unable to identify it talks about sitar performances it talks about veena performances it talks about vocal uh, music what is very interesting is that the sabha had the creme de la creme of madras society sirti mutsami ayer justice of the high court of madras then the governor was the patron then queen victoria's son the duke of connaught was actually the patron in chief though it's very unlikely that you would even known that he was patron in chief of one sabha in madras and then we find that we have all the, uh, henry shomia who was one of the secretaries of the government of madras these were all members and before the performance began one of the indians would read out a paper in english explaining to the british as to what was the performance that was going to happen after this so if the performance didn't happen in the pachayapas hall it would happen in las house las house is today Krishna Swami Avenue and Balaya Avenue and Kamadenu Theater put together. It was a small house of 150 grounds, each ground being 2,400 square feet in area. So there was a lot of space for conducting of music performances. So Las House was the other venue where these performances happened. Under the Sabha Secretary, see today the Sabha Secretary is a difficult uh, term in the sense that some people are full of praise for it. Those are the Sabha Secretaries themselves. and then there are most people curse them which also you know you have to take as part of life and then we get along with it so uh, tachur singaracharlu these are the two brothers tachu pedda singaracharlu and chinna singaracharlu these were violinist and they were veena players as well they wrote a number of books on music in fact some of the early carnatic music primers written in telugu sangeetha kalanidhi sangeetha parijatam gayaka siddhanchanam gayaka lochanam these were all books written by the tachur brothers they were the first secretaries of that particular sabha we also find george town was full of interesting locations where musical organizations held performances this is today a commodity godown masala manjal ella pack pandra oru godown idu this at one time was the tiruvannamalai matam hall in nattapuliyar kovil street in town and this is where music performances happened and this is where mahavaidyanatha sivan is supposed to have defeated suravira veera sura kanthamani venu in a competition and by singing the raga narayana gaula which venu did not even know existed and therefore was defeated in the process so this was the location where that performance happened but these were all impromptu organizations and then you find that bhakti marga prasanga sabha comes into existence in the 1890s early 1890s it was meant only as the name suggests prasangam harikatha kaha form panna patta oru sabha so idhila kacherigal kadaiyad adha adha mattum kadaiyad ore oru artist da tanjavur krishna bhagavathar avar madras ku vandarna adha sabha aniki kooda avar varala na oru programum kadaiyad it was meant for one man and only his harikathas and this is how the sabha really began and it operated from the hindu theological school in georgetown so we find that we have migrated from open parks gardens 
houses of the rich and the temples, we now find for the first time that there is a talk of enclosures. So you've got the Pachepa's Hall, you're talking about Laz House, which is again house of the rich. Then you've got Bhakti Marga Prasanga Sabha meeting in the Hindu Theological School in Mint Street in Georgetown. When Krishna Bhagavata died, there was a great chaos. They didn't know what to do. And then very reluctantly, they began inviting other Harikatha performers to come and perform. Carnatic musicians were not even considered by the Sabha. In those days, it is very interesting to read that a Harikatha performer got 150 rupees for the performance. A Carnatic musician got 50 rupees. So this was the difference. And the, the art which was in demand was evidently that of the Harikatha performer. Thereafter, we find that these were all, all are welcome in the sense that the patrons would put the money, they would invite the artist, patrons would pay the artist, artist would collect the money and leave. It was open to people to come and participate in the program. Then in, 18, in the 1890s, the same Bhakti Marga Prasanga Sabha decides that, no, Mutyal Pet Sabha, it decides that it can sell tickets. And that is for a concert of Mahavaidinada Sivan. Mahavaidinada Sivan comes to Madras. He finds people are walking back from the Sabha because they did not bring money to listen to the performance. He gets very angry. He cancels his performance. Then he goes and sings in the Thiruvalikeni Parthasarathi Swami temple. He sings on the first day, 250 rupees is collected by the audience. Second day, he is invited to come back. Again, 250. Third day, 250. So he collects 750 rupees. The ticket idea was a flop, but he made the money. But he was a very saintly personality. One third of the money was given to the accompanists. One third of the money was given to the Parthasarthi Swami temple. One third of the money was sent to his village temple in Bayez area and he went home with nothing. He was that kind of an artist. But in the Mari stories, audience all are welcome. And that feeling has persisted from the 1890s till 2021. But then, you know, you, you, nowadays as you grow older, you keep quiet. And then they are. So this tendency of expecting that the Carnatic artist should be poor, should not have any expectations of being well-to-do in life, and there is one class of audience which thinks artist poor are irundala part in anavaro. Ippa avar periyala itar sir avar part lo odume illa karla bohar mister illa itar. So this is a very strange attitude that the Carnatic world suffers from where the artist is not expected to make any money. YouTube le potu dreila. Free ya kevru dema. Adha kapar ma adha YouTube le pota chen chona apna link ani preila. Apna onga adha computer le on man dema. Sometimes I wonder at the patience of our Carnatic musicians. They are all saints in my view. The music sabhas were Sangeeta sabhas, the Harikathas were Prasanga sabhas. You also had Nataka sabhas. The drama world had all the drama organizations of that period. They used the word sabha. Meena Lochani sabha. Uh, Shanmukhananda Sabha, these were all words that were used in drama. Perhaps the most famous was the Suguna Vilasa Sabha, which today is a social club, but founded by Pamal Samanda Mudaliar and his friends in the 1880s and operating then from the Victoria Public Hall. Only men, all the men had to dress, the women's roles were all performed by the male artists. And uh, this was one of the very interesting examples of a sabha that eschewed what all other theatre sabhas did. That is, there was no music because they believed that the theatre had to sell by itself. It did not have to depend on other art forms to in order to make itself. So the Suguna Vilasa Sabha till the 1930s was a very big thing. Then we come to some of the interesting organizations and the venues in which they were meeting in the early 1900s. So I told you about the Hindu Theological School in Mint Street. That is the hall that you see on the top left. And that building today has been very much renovated. This hall is not there. But in the 1990s and early 2000s, it was there. I was lucky enough to get a photograph of it. But this is where the first Carnatic music performances really happened. Then, between Central Station and Egmore Station, you'll see the orange building which is next to it. On Poonamali High Road, there is a building called Jaya Mansions. 
and it is home to the Everest Hotel. So this was known as the Everest Lodge in the 1930s, 40s and all that. Actually, it was meant to be the hostel for the Madras Medical College. But for some reason, the hostel never took off. Therefore, it became a hotel. The terrace of this hotel was where, is, where the Muthyal Pet Sabha used to meet. And Everest Lord Sundaramayar was a great patron of the arts. There is even an account of Tiger Varadacharya on a full moon night uh, singing in the top floor of Everest Lodge and seeing the full moon and then starting a Purna Chandrika Ragam Thanam Pallavi because he was so inspired by the beauty of that site. This building incidentally still stands but it has been subject to a lot of renovation and is no longer what it was. Then down below in Tripoli Kane you have the Hindu High School and that is where the Parthasarathi Swami Sabha was founded in the year 1900. Today that is the oldest Sabha in the city. It is now a 121 years old which is quite a record for an organization of this kind. We find that there were many nameless Sabhas of which we have no idea who founded them, what you know, what ran them, what was the model on which they ran. For instance, when Bharkande comes to Madras in the year, in the early 1900s, I'm, I'm talking about 1910, 19, sorry, not even 1910, I'm talking about 1904, 1905. He says he attended a performance of Bangalore Nagaratnama in the first floor of a building in Ramaswamy Street in Georgetown. He says it was a sabha. He says there was an organizer and people had invited him and he went there. He found a stage on which the artist was sitting. So it's a very conventional description of a music performance and how people were applauding her and they were, you know, passing comments. There was conversation between the artist and the audience. So all that we expect in a very intimate atmosphere in a concert was there in 1904-1905 when Bharat Kandri comes. Then we find the first formal auditoriums are coming into existence. This is in 1915 when Annie Besant builds Gokhale Hall in Armenian Street. For the first time, we find that there is a proscenium and there is a separation between the audience and the artist. Artist seated on stage, a small distance separating them from the uh, audience. Then audience seated, you also have a balcony. Like the Victoria Public Hall, which was probably the first performance venue in the city that had a balcony. This also had a balcony for Carnatic music performances. Audiences apparently used to shout requests from the balcony, from the hall. And the musician was expected to listen, respond and perform. It was also a place which was known in, I think there is one magazine, I think Sangeeta Abhimani or I don't know, one of the early... Ananda Vigadan issues, there is a review which refers to this place as Gok L Hall right through. I don't know whether it's a Freudian slip, but that whole article is a criticism of the audience behavior in this particular venue. So apparently, they uh, it was a uh, performance where uh, Dakshina Murthy Pillai was performing the Bridangam and uh, DK Patamal was giving the concert. And uh, the audience kept, you know, there were remarks, there were comments, there were requests. Dakshina Murthy Pillai apparently turned around and said, Nigala Sita Sumar Kela. And he shouted at the audience. This was also a location where apparently if the Mridangam artist made a mistake, he would be asked to stand up for the rest of the concert. So some kind of terrorism was evident in the uh, place. So this was a very unusual venue, the Gokhale Hall. It still stands without a roof. It's one of the great tragedies of this city that we don't care for heritage buildings, but let me not get into that. But we'll, we'll keep coming into Gokhale Hall history a little bit in further in the presentation as well. We have the last of the great house-bound sabhas. That is no auditorium. By this time, by 1915-1916, we find that it is expected that if you have a music performance for a sabha, you have to have audiences coming and sitting in a space, an enclosed space like the Gokhale Hall or a school building and all that. But there would always be that one organization that would beat this rule, that would be the one exception and that was the Jagannatha Bhakta Sabha. Jagannatha Bhakta Sabha operated from the veranda of the house of Rao Bahadur T. Rangacharya, who was a great lawyer. And this was the house called Veda Villas, which used to stand on Egmore High Road. 
And that Sabha was run by Muttanna, who was the black and white photograph that you see with the Nama. He was the son of Rao Bahadur T. Rangacharya. And the other man who ran it along with him was R. Rangaramanu Jayengar, who published Kriti Mani Malay. And Rangaramanu Jayengar and uh, this one, uh, Muttanna, were two of the most acidic people possible. They had no saliva, they had only hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. So, you had to really be, in fact, you should read, if at all you get it, you should read Rangaramanu Jayengar's memoirs. It's called Memoirs of a Musician. It's a book full of curses about everybody who was successful during that era. And uh, it is worth reading because it's, it shows a lot of bile in the writing of the book. It was probably written with just bile and not ink. But Rangara Manu Jayengar and Muttanna were very high standard people. So the performances took place in the simplest of atmosphere, the veranda of the house. Only floor seating, paidam, where onnu kadayadu. And in the summer season, Kaila Elarko Vishri Kurtuva. So that was a basic, you know, no fans, nothing like that. But the compound was big, the road was very far away, there was no traffic. All performances took place in the open veranda. And till the 1950s, the Jagannatha Bhakta Sava operated. And when Dr. Raghavan wrote an article about it in the 1930s or 40s, he said it is an organization that is on par with the Music Academy when it comes to its knowledge and its patronage of musicians. It was here that Palgat Maniyayar gave his first, first performance in Madras. It was here that Payani Subramanya Pillai gave his first performance. It was here that Brinda Mukta gave their first performance. In fact, Rangaranga, Ramaramana, Jayenga, they were all people who had great partiality to the Dhanam school of uh, music. So, Dhanamal herself came here and performed in that veranda. When the when C. Saraswati Bai's portrait was to be unveiled in the university and the university syndicate for various reasons said they would not want the portrait there. It was unveiled in the Jagannatha Bhakta Sabha. So this was a great center of music and in the Adathala Vandhu Padi Pair Vangana Na Adhapuru Periya Levelo or Artist Arandhukuna because otherwise their performances would not be tolerated. One of the fixtures in the Jagannatha Bhakta Sabha was Jalatarangam Ramaniya Chetti dripping with gold medals in his pockets. If he liked anybody, he would immediately give them a gold medal. So this was the level of patronage and esteem that the Jagannatha Bhakta Sabha really enjoyed. It was a great organization. Sadly, no trace of it today, except a letterhead or two and some newspaper reviews of and Dr. Raghavan's uh, article. You may be wondering where is Mailapur in all this. Today, of course, you know, we consider it to be the cultural capital of the city. There are people who consider it to be the cultural capital of the whole world. All kinds of things. So, but Mailapur is, a, you know, one of those uh, places. Now, where are the Mailapur Sabhas? Up to 1915, I haven't even spoken about it. And you find that Mailapur made a very late entry into the world of Carnatic music patronage. So, Kapalishwarar Kovil, Madhav Permal Kovil, you know, we do hear of concerts having been held, Pahini Patnam Subramanya Ayer, Mahavaidinada Sivan, they are supposed to have met at Madhav Permal Kovil in Mailapur and performances have happened there, etc. Kapalishwarar Kovil. But we should not forget that the Kapalishwarar Kovil itself had a very checkered history till late in the 1800s. There were fights between the trustees, there were court cases, the East India Company had to get involved. So it was not a well administered, it's not the kind of temple that we see today. So it took a while for that location to become a great center for music. And we find that the first sabha that operated in that area, this was sometime in 1919, 1920, 1925 and all that was the Mailapur Sangeet Sabha, which operated from the Vanir Sangam school in Nadu street. And uh, concerts would be on Sunday afternoon, one minute before Rahu Kalam began. And they would continue for three and a half hours. No mics. They are still not coming to the mic era. And only thatched roof. And Kalana was the, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, Kalana was the season ticket for the Ramanavani series. So you, for an entire season, you could buy for Kalana. They would draw a rope between the male and the female audiences. As you know, we are a very erotic society, so we had to be separated all the time. So the males and the females were, so that you know, the camphor and the cotton did not get together, as they would say. 
So the audiences were separated and once again you could ask artists to sing whatever you felt like. There was a family of scorpions that rested in the roof and whenever the Thaniyavartanam got a little exciting, the scorpions would begin dropping one by one on the audiences and create a lot of confusion. So all these things happened. Uh, but it was a great location. Then this Sabha, this Mailapur Sangeet Sabha had a strange rule. No Nagaswaram artists would be allowed to perform and no theatre, only Carnatic music. So in 1929, A.K. Ramachandrayar, who was a member of the Mailapur Sangeet Sabha, he said it is high time we founded an organization where Nagaswaram would be allowed, theatre should be allowed. And lastly, we should have chairs for the seating of the audience. So, we now come to the next great development, which is the arrival of the armchair. By the time prosperity has hit our Carnatic music audiences, we are not physically as pliable as we were before. Seating on the floor was becoming difficult. And therefore, in 1929, the Rasikaranjani Sabha comes into existence just one street away from the Mailai Sangeetha Sabha, RR Sabha. And it then has all these new the seating arrangement and it also has Nagaswaram performances. For the first time, Nagaswaram performances are entering the Sabha uh, venue and thereafter they would remain there forever. The, in 1929, in 1927, we have the All India Congress session and then as we all know, the Music Academy was founded based on that. Music Academy incidentally was not meant to be a Sabha. It was meant to be an organization that would conduct research into the world of music and the arts. And it would also conduct model performances. That was the aim. It was not meant to be the regular kachiri. Two and a half hour performances were considered to be the limit of an audience's patience in the music academy world. So they brought down the uh, duration to two and a half hours. And every year they decided that in the month of December, they would conduct a model, a presentation of how Carnatic music ought to be. Now, in the arts, it is very difficult to say that this is the way things should be. Your view may not be that person's view. That person's view will definitely not be this person's view. It will not be mine because arts is a highly subjective field. And so the Academy's idea of model performances was two and a half hours. No Upapakavadya, only Mridangam, no Nagaswaram artists. These were all highly contentious issues. And so right from the beginning, it created problems in the world of the, in, in, music, in the music world. But it decided that December would be the time when it would conduct music performances. Therefore, December 24th to December 31st would become the time when music and dance, music performances would be held. That marks the genesis of the music season as we know of it today. 1927 is when the first such in the All India Congress session that year, concerts are held in the spur tank. And the lecture sessions, for the first time we hear the word theory sessions, debates on music and that happens in the museum theatre. But we must not forget that several years prior to this, in the early 1900s, 1912 to be precise, Abraham Panditar has already conducted the first lecture demonstrations in Tanjavu with the help of Harikesh and Alur Mutaya Bhagavata. That is the time when the world of Carnatic music realizes that there is something in theory that can be presented and spoken about. Veena Dhanamal is supposed to have asked, he then academy, so you know, music is supposed to be sung. What is all this question about talking about Lakshana, Lakshya? Ragas, Melakarta, Scale, this, that and sundry. Musicians were not very fond of that idea. But it was the Music Academy that took it forward. And from then on, it became a fixture. Today, when you look at the December season, the lecture, like them, becomes as important as the music performances in, this, uh, in the art. Academy starts off with the Young Men's Christian Association on NSC Bose Road. Still standing at one time, the home to 18 different music sabhas. All tiny, tiny organizations that would hire the Mukkanohi Hall, which could seat 250 people at most. And that was the venue where all these sabhas used to operate from. Music Academy also hires this hall in August, on August 18th, 1928. There is a concert by Kansipuram Nayana Pillai in this building. 
that marks the beginning of the music academy. Interestingly, this is also the building where the first woman run Sabha, the Venkatesha Gunamrita Bhivarshini Sabha, started by Alamelu Jairam Ayer, the wife of K.S. Jairam Ayer, very well known lawyer of the Madras High Court. She was the founder of that uh, Sabha and she, uh, it's called Muttyal Pet. Uh, Venkatesha Gunamrita Bhivarshini Sabha, if I am not mistaken, but I should get back to you on that. And the, it had a very interesting formula. The senior concerts would be ticketed. The money that would come from the senior concert would be used to fund the junior concerts, which would be open to everybody. Today, we follow the same pattern. Music Academy, Vani Mahal, Krishna Gana Sabha, you name it. Afternoon concerts for youngsters is free. The money comes from sponsorship, the money comes from ticket sales. And therefore, very creative, you know, a woman had to come with this formula, frankly. And that this is how it could be, it could sustain itself. So, the seniors were well established, people will come to listen to them. Money will come from that. Juniors, you need to invite people to come and listen to them. Otherwise, how are they going to, people, how are people going to know? But they need to be paid because they need to live. So, that money would be transferred here. So she came up with that idea and that's a formula that we have followed ever since. In the Sabha inauguration is something that uh, I have always had my personal views about and I must say over here that the views are entirely personal. They are not uh, the views of any organized body. But the point is that from 1927, 28, this music academy makes it a practice of inviting judge, viceroy, governor, this, that and sundry and... The Kalki himself said in the Sangeetha Dapati, Thiriyadavala Kupadade Vandhi Parakama Pedithi. And uh, when Sir Mutta Venkat Subharao comes to inaugurate the Music Academy concert for a series, he says, I am an ignoramus in the world of music. And Kalki in his review says, Enna araha ure vaarthayla thanapati solita. Ignoramus abdi ni soli. Ida Tamil la vandhi, Agyana irul kundru, Maudi kamalai, Madasambrani abdi ni rendri indu vaarthay, Moon moon vaarthay, Seethi seethi thang poda mudiyum. English la ore vaarthayla araha thanapati define mani duta, Vandhi araha sabhao inaugurate mani duta. So that tradition has continued and uh, that is a presentation that I will, except barring one or two things, the Trinity Abhati Swalalena and the inaugural speech a complete ahada madri in the, and the chief guest kur feeling. Secondly, probably the chief guest doesn't write the speech themselves, some secretary from in these days from Google, in those days from something else. He's a model of our practice where a panikimata. matter. Anga and the Thyagaraja is a breeze. You just say Thyagaraja. Now you come to Muthuswami Dikshita. This is tough. Particularly when 1500 people are seated, the lighting is not great and you are elderly, you are wearing bifocals. Then you stop and then you ponder, oh, what is this name? Secretary didn't tell me what this is. So I have had occasion where I am seated behind and I am hearing Thyagaraja, wonderful, Muth, 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 and then Diksh, Dikshita, Dikshita, and then Shamsastri. Straight away, you know, the, 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 the names are impossible for many of them. It makes you wonder why they make all these efforts to write things that we knew in any case. And then, the Gopala Krishna Bharati Arvind, the Thyagaraja Ramit Pananda Kada, if there is a record for the number of times an inaugural speech has covered this story, this must be winning it, I, you know, lock, stock and barrel. My strong suspicion is at least one person who came to inaugurate came with the wrong speech because she looked at it and then there was a scream of horror and she almost fell back and then she managed by giving the shortest speech in the history of the music academy in one minute she inaugurated and went back because my guess is that the person didn't know what the speech was all about so general are these inaugurations music academy really began this but without an inauguration today it looks very incomplete right so this is it but thereafter the sabha history is one of people not being able to get along with each other so the music academy bans teach out a year because it says we don't want to hear your seven string violin under our portals. Chaudaya then gets all the Telugu and Kannada speaking people of Madras together and says what is this place called the academy. Surely you can form a sabha by yourself and so they get together and form what is known as the Indian Fine Arts Society. All the Arya Vaishyas and the Kannada speaking people of Madras they rally round behind Chaudaya. Namaguttu, Manavadu, what the hell, you know, how can you be insulted by some music academy? You will be our man 
And if they start their program on December 24th, we will also start our program on December 24th. If they finish on December 31st, we will also finish on December 31st. If they invite the governor, we will invite the chief secretary. If they invite the chief justice, we will invite the registrar of the high court. And so on and so forth. In the early days, Indian Fine Arts Society is a big organization supported by all the Aryavaisyas, the Komiti Chettis of Georgetown. Sydney Elementa Chetty, Anjanelu Chetty, then the Kandalagadda family which runs Ziga Theatre today, Vuputur, Embervanar Chetty of Perumal Chetty and Sons. These are all the big people in the Indian Fine Arts Society and they would operate from the Gokhale Hall on Armenian Street. And the first year, 1928 Academy, 1931 Indian Fine Arts Society, first year, seven days lecture demonstration, all seven days by Chaudhaya. In revenge for the academy not allowing him to enter the portals. Of course, later on, you know, academy and Chaudhaya would become very good friends. He would then eventually get the Kalanidhi and so on and so forth. But between these organizations, they did a few good things and that we should never forget. One is the campaigning for making music a part of educational curriculum. Prior to that, no, it was all informal. The Madras University had an optional course in Queen Mary's College. But making it a part of the BA degree was done entirely by the Music Academy lobbying for it. The other great thing that was done by the Indian Fine Arts Society and the Music Academy was they both began teaching institutions. Their idea was that once music becomes a part of the curriculum in schools, you will need music teachers to go and teach in those locations. The Gurukula system was on the wane, it was no longer there. And therefore, they both began teachers' colleges of music. Indian Fine Arts Institution did not survive after a few years. Academies has continued even today. It's called the Advanced School of Carnatic Music. Very interestingly, the Tamil Isai Sangam, when it comes into existence, would also start its Isai Kaluri. And that became this education of music was a very, very important step that these organizations took. So the money that they were making from concerts was going towards funding the education and therefore the propagation of music. So that was a very valuable step at this time. They were also lobbying with the government. So in order to make it part of the education curriculum and finally that does happen. The other of course is the entire dance question which today has become a contentious topic as it rightfully should be because in my view anything and everything needs to be debated. There cannot be a one view on anything and even today the debate continues. Was that entire transfer from one community to other communities a fair transfer? In my opinion, no. I would say that one community suffered and the art form was taken out and given to the others. There were various historical reasons for it. But what I would say is that had the Sabhas not intervened at that critical moment, the art would have vanished along with the excommunication of those who were practicing that particular art form. So the academy in 1931 starts that process of presenting to the public the Sadr performances so that people get to see that this is not an evil art, this is not black magic, this is not cheap, this is not vulgar. Again, cheap, vulgar are all terms that are subjective. What is cheap to me may not be cheap to someone else. So that again is a huge debate that comes into question. But it cannot be denied at this time that there was a major transformation in the world of dance. Dance became to be appreciated by the public, by a wider public and girls from various families began to come forward to learn the dance form. In the 19, late 1930s, we have the Tamil Isai controversy. This is when we find that the demand for Tamil songs is becoming more and more strident in Madras presidency. The traditional Carnatic music world is not in favor of that. They want Sanskrit and Tamil and Telugu songs. In fact, even people like Ramana Jagar have given speeches where they have said that TTK, himself, TTK has said it, that Tamil is not a musical language at all. So it was just dismissed with that. And that naturally hurt a lot of uh, sentiments. Tamil part of the book, 75% of the book will be Telugu songs. Then there will be 20% uh, will be uh, Sanskrit songs. So, it's a very, you know, the book was being published here, it was being sold here, and then you dismiss the language as chillare. 
and that is when the great movement to resurrect old tamil pieces and create music for them really starts raja sir annamalai chettiar funds the thing and the tamil isai sangam comes into existence in 1943 in 1940 in 1941 you have the first tamil isai conference in in uh, devakote thereafter you have it in annamalai university and resolutions are passed that the majority of the songs sung on the carnatic music platform ought to be in the tamil language this was sternly opposed by organizations such as the music academy and the indian fine arts society you must remember that this was the time when the world war had started 1939 so we had our own war over here and the other issue was this is the only in terms of difficult in times of difficulty you will find that the sabhas are coming together so the music academy and the indian fine arts society come together and for 3 years they conduct joint music performances between 1939 sorry between 1941 and 1943 they conduct it at this time the big sabha is the tamil isai sangam founded in 1943 with concert performance of ms subalakshmi in one night 3000 rupees is collected by her concert held at the st mary's parish hall in armenian street the building doesn't exist anymore today it's the catholic center but that is where the tamil isai so one you had the gokhale hall where the isai the indian fine arts was being held next door you had the tamil isai sangam so those two started on december 24 we will also start on december 24 so december 24 to december 31st was the third sabha conducting its performances at that time in newspapers there were articles as to, as to whether the december music season can support three organizations conduct music conducting music performances at the same time but that is how the tamil isai sangam really started lots of battles you know people who sang for the tamil isai sangam were dropped by the music academy the uh, some artists boycotted the tamil isai sangam ramanujayanga for instance said that unless i am allowed to begin my concerts by singing a varnam of my guru i will not perform for the tamil isai sangam and therefore it was till 1957 55 that peace was made between ramanujayangar and the tamil isai sangam and then on the condition that he could sing telugu compositions so he goes and then he starts singing for the tamil isai sangam thereafter adu eppadina modala or varnatha paadiduvar appra or rendu moonu tamil paadu paadidu main piece or 45 nimisha telugu paata paadiduvar then he will continue with the tamil songs once again nobody could say anything because this this was a stage in the world of music those were artists who could dictate terms to sabhas similarly academy dropped ms subalakshmi at this time and for 5 years thought it could manage without her but at that time sadasivam took an oath that he would finish the music academy for good and he starts a sabha called the mailai sangeetha sabha you remember the old mailapur sangeetha sabha that had died he resurrected the name and mss sings for mss so the name much was made on the similarity of the names performances were held in mailapur if the music academy invited roshnara begum to come down from punjab and sing over or from up and sing over here one day before she would sing for the mailapur sangeetha sabha so nobody would go for attending her performance in the music academy by the mid 1940s mailapur sangeetha sabha had collected enough money and sadasivam was talking about building an auditorium of their own academy was struggling tamil isai sangam was building its own auditorium but if you look at the academy minutes what really shocked them was this organization founded in 1945 and same year negotiating for the purchase of land in tinagar and building an auditorium for itself if you read the minutes of the academy it's a it's a great shock to them you know here we are we've been around from 1927 we haven't bought land we have not got our own premises we are conducting performances in senate house we are conducting performances behind the corporation in open pandals in and suddenly you find vani mahal tyaga brahma gana sabha founded by chittur nagaya and two or three others from tinagar and they are already they are talking about building an auditorium so academy really begins to it gets spurred into action at that time peace is hastily made with ms subalakshmi because money her money is needed for the building of an auditorium and as is very well known this is also the time that the indian fine arts society 
this man B V Gopal Krishna Rao, who was the founder of the Indian Finance Society, he was a work. He he worked for the corporation of Chennai. This is where vision, you know, really comes into play. They had five grounds in Tinagar, the Indian Finance Society. They were given five grounds by the corporation. They thought Tinagar was not a place where auditoriums need to be built, and this was not a place where sabhas would really flourish. They sold the land, and thereafter. they never ever could get back to building an auditorium of their own a crucial moment had been uh, lost and that is where i would say that the vani mahal really had you know it got a head start and had the vision to do it but all this vision was and then of course the tamil say sangam took the land from the government on a 50 year lease it is even today a leased property the tamil say sangam land It, it has been renewed periodically, subject to all the headaches that leasing really uh, entails, especially from the government. But this is where you know, if we look at the vision of the Vani Mahal, the vision of the music academy was even bigger, and that was because of one man, Bashir Ahmed Said, who was vice president of the music academy at that time. Later, Justice Bashir Ahmed Said, you know, the Tamil, the Brahmana culture, Kadan Mangalda, chance ke liye the Sirika Kati, Pirika Bar. இத சொல்லியே நம்ம எல்லாரையும் ஒரு ஆம்பிஷன் இல்லாத ஒரு கம்யூனிட்டிய ஆக்கினதுக்கு ஃபுல் மார்க்ஸ் கொடுக்கணும் சிறுக கட்டி பேரவா சிம்பிள் லிவிங் ஐ திங்க் சிம்பிள் லிவிங் ஐ திங்க் அவாய்ட் பண்ண வரலாம் நமக்கு இத தெரிஞ்சல சோ இதே சொல்லிட்டு we have managed over all these years so academy had saved and scrounged and decided that it would buy princely land of 2400 square feet in tiruvallikeni ஒரு கிரவுண்ட் ஏனா அதுதான் நம்மட்ட இருந்தது பணம் So it was Bashir Ahmed Said who said, "You are not building on 2,400 square feet. You are building an institution for the future." And they said, "What? You should read all the minutes, the Kara Saramana negotiations that go on. In those days, they used to write everything in the minutes also." He said, "27 grounds is coming up for sale on Edward Elliot's road. You need to buy it." So they said, "Where will we go for the money?" He said, "Borrow." Whereupon the entire community committee had. A collective heart attack and died. <laughs> Then they all had to be revived. Kasturi Srinivasan of the Hindu was, after all, a businessman, and he had the vision as well. So they decided to negotiate with Indian Overseas Bank, an Indian bank, but get the money. And finally, great shame, you know, we become Karan Karalai. Karan Petra, na Karan Petra, Nenje Petra, Nenje Bol, Kalangi Naan, Ilangai Vendha. And the Madhurila, I'm sure all those dialogues must have been recited then. Finally, with great shame, they went and bought that land of 27 grounds. They retained the building called Sweet Home till 1955, as we all know. Then that building was demolished, and then the new auditorium came up, completed in 1962. 62, they had no idea how they were going to repay that loan, and by 1967, they were defaulting on the loan. And Ramnath Goenka had, as somebody told me, he could just smell real estate anywhere that was distressed. he just had to walk down a road and he would smell it and so he had come to know that the academy was not repaying its loans so he struck a deal with the indian bank that you bring the place to auction and i will buy it we will convert it into a cinema theater so this was in 1967 first january 1968 tt krishnamachari calls for a meeting of the academy committee and some well wishers of madras and says this is going to leave our hands very soon unless we repay some of the loan At this time, V.D. Swami is in the audience, and he says, "Let's run it as a cinema theater for all the months when we don't run it as a sabha." You remember the first heart attack when the loan was supposed to be got? This was the second heart attack, and T.T.K. was furious. At this time, K.S. Narayanan and uh, T.S. Narayanan Swami, both of India Cement, they said, "You leave it to us. We'll form a committee to bail out the music academy." and within one month by february middle or so they had collected enough money to pay a significant sum by way of donations had been collected that money was paid then ks narayanan negotiated on behalf of the academy for some restructuring of the loan plan the day the check was handed over to the bank ts narayan swami died it was almost as though he had worked only to save the music academy. and even today his portrait hangs there in eternal gratitude because if it had not been for him there would not be an academy today in existence similarly ms subalakshmi 
Had it not been for her, had it not been for Kumari Kamala, these were all the people who gave so many performances to collect money for making that auditorium a reality. So great sacrifices. At this time, we find that we, we find that there is a Mailapur Fine Arts coming up in Mailapur. And then gradually break away organization. As I said, the history of Sabhas in Madras is a history of people not getting along with each other. So the Brahmagana Sabha then comes out. From the Brahmagana Sabha, the Nardagana Sabha comes out. Karthik Fine Arts comes out. So these are all kind of, you know, some kind of a mitotic, meiotic division or whatever you call it in biology. I've forgotten now. So mitosis or meiosis, one of those things where hereafter I will break away and form an organization of my own. So these organizations flourish. 62, as I said, Academy's auditorium comes into existence. In the meantime, there is one or hall which, like the YMCA hall in NSE Bose Road, continued to remain the home of music performances for homeless sabhas. Sabhas that had no big budgets, they encouraged young musicians and where they could come. Again, open windows, open to the quiet last corner, and you could sit there and perform. It was considered important to make a name for yourself in Shastri Hall. If you made a name in Shastri Hall, you were a success. You had the simplest of audiences. People who came from, very, you, these were not the titled knights and the business barons who came, this Sabha did not talk, Shastri Hall did not uh, encourage that kind of, I mean, I shouldn't say it, but in certain organizations that VIP door entrance is a worldwide session. The, uh, you know, everybody's ahead, even in the balcony, they'll be looking down at the ground floor VIP door. And at, uh, if the concert starts at 4.15, at 4.30, there'll be a flourish. You can almost hear the blare of trumpets and elephants trumpeting, people throwing flowers, that kind of, you can imagine it. There'll be the door opening and they won't get in immediately. They'll stand there and look. in a pakrada. then I go and sit. So this is, uh, Shastri Hall, none of this really worked. In Shastri Hall, you had to, you'd have Dr. S. Ramanathan sitting in the audience, <laughs> appreciating everything that was going on. This was where Carnatic music really flourished, in my opinion. And strangely enough, today you find it's back, Sanjay Subramaniam's, many of his uh, virtual performances are recorded there today. So it's that lovely venue. It cannot, of course, the traffic has increased and that is a big bane. Similarly, unsung, Perambur Sangeeta Sabha, even today in existence, still conducting music performances in Perambur in a rented venue. I went there just to see the location. I went a few months late because the house where it started had just been demolished. The man who had begun it had passed away a few years earlier. But for me, it was a pilgrimage because so many concerts where you hear the railway whistle in the background, there are only two. One is Chanmukhananda in the old days before it became an auditorium. There are only two venues where you hear this railway whistle in the background. The other is the Perapur uh, Sangeet Sabha when it existed in its earlier location, not where it is today. So you have this very well-known uh, Ramanujayanga concert where he's just completed his Alapana T and Krishna is going to start and you hear a full steam engine chugging through. And he says, Hiru. And then once it has gone, he then, T and Krishna then starts the performance. Perambur Sangeet Sabha was a great location. Karakudi Sambasivayar was the president of this uh, particular organization. Setu Raman was its secretary. Hardly any money. But the Vidwat was great. And there's this famous story of Ramanujayanga going there and Setu Raman coming with a packet of idlis before the concert and bursting into tears. So Ramanujayanga says, illa mama, fees. So Ramana Jengar, I believe, said, Ni edhikda adara, nana adana, nana manara, to the So this was the story of Perambur Sangeet Sabha. But Perambur Sangeet Sabha is still going. Perambur Sangeet Sabha is still going. Perambur Sangeet Sabha is still Perambur Sangeet Sabha But today, and similarly, Krishna Gana Sabha, founded by Maharajapuram Vishwanath Ayer and Maharajapuram Santana. Much later, Yagya Raman becomes the secretary and the live wire that he was, created an entity out of it. But Vishwanath Ayer and father and son created a Sabha left it to us, for us to enjoy so many years later. 
very strangely that one sabha that bucked the december awards for musicians tradition with a natya kala conference and a dance focus the musicians are given their award during gokulashtami that brings to mind an entire world that has gone away we december music season was not the only today i had a driver who once asked me sir ninga ungalku nariya friends paadranga irukkaangale december thavara meedhiyala enna panniterupaanga meedhi time alla he thought that there was no other time when they performed so this is a strange world that we have come into mr krishnaswami of narada sabha once told me on 5 minutes before a concert and i laughed for much of the performance he said in the kacheri ethana ved vandiruka par this is the december idhe january 1 am thedi nee in the kacheri ave idhe paadaganuga anju ver okkanirupa and that it's a strange world that you know december has become associated with carnatic music rest of the time the same performers no we don't want to go we don't like to go so it's a but this was a city where we had ramanavami series we had navaratri series we had gokulashtami series then we had the december music performance and vani mahal itself was an example i think for a long time you never had a december music performance you had uh, tirupavai series you had katha kalakshepams and all that but you the indian fine arts society used to use this as its uh, venue before you decided to begin with your own december music performances so it was a different world at that time and krishna gana sabha was like that the ramakrishna mission used to conduct its navaratri series it does even now sporadically but in the time of ramanuja acharya that was a very big thing madhuramani ayyar sri saraswati bai and all performing in the mailapur ramakrishna mission a great location you had the odd sabha the 50 50 club founded by sy krishna swami known as 50 50 because 50% male 50% female membership husband and wife membership the in in our world the ma- husband's membership is what really <laughs> the wife's membership never counted for much but here it was the 50 50 which was both husband and wife were members and after the concert la- dinner would be served so this was in the sgs sabha samyukta gauda saraswat sabha and in habibulla road and uh, SYK in his memoirs writes that at least 50% came to listen to the music the other 50% came to listen to have the food but that's why it was called 50 50 as well but then this thrived for a very long time and then one day randor guy told me consider 99% food na it's ba anala point of point so that was a different story then we had the narada gana sabha building its auditorium the reason why i am making this a uh, landmark is that this was an organization that began in the 50s and then it built its auditorium only by the early 1990s if i am not mistaken and it required tremendous effort by swami haridas giri shivaji ganeshan hema malini these were all the people who put up performances it was touch and go till the auditorium was really built but after that no sabha in the city has been able to build an auditorium of its own this was the last great venue and probably given the economics of carnatic music world maybe no sabha will ever again build an auditorium of its own the reason is that carnatic music itself is restricted to pockets mailapur tinagar beyond that let's be very frank we talk about 60 music organizations putting up 2000 music dance performances in the month of december i think that's a falsehood it doesn't really exist in as again i'm going back to mr krishna swami of narada gana sabha he used to dismiss all of them as fly by night operators peshave besala vaala pati motta or 10 sabha 15 sabha ivada real organizations this was his uh, uh, you know the way he would look at it and he would say all the others are fly by night and they don't really count point number 1 secondly it's the same audience that goes round and round and round and even if you are looking at five great artists performing in one night and then several others performing the total carnatic music world is only 20000 people at most we need to wake up and we need to face it this is all that there is the organization support this art form because it's a old art it's a classical art it it needs patronage all over the world the classical arts need patronage it is not unique to carnatic music you go to the western classical music you go to the opera house in milan you will find list of corporate sponsors who are all the all that is 
every classical art in the world requires this kind of support. We are no exception. We don't have to be apologetic about it. But that is the definition. That's our ecosystem. This is all that exists in our world. Given this and given the land prices in our localities today, no sabha will probably ever be able to build a venue of its own. That is why I would say that people like Chitur Nagaya, Divan Ramayangar, Bashir Ahmed Said, Krishna Swami, these are all people of great vision. They were able to put up huge venues at great personal sacrifice. Not one of them benefited by one rupee from anything that was done. These are all shining examples of what was left for posterity for us to enjoy. These, in my opinion, they are as great as the great Carnatic artists. They'll be forgotten. Over a period of time, nobody is going to remember these great men and women. But, in my opinion, they deserve commemoration because they created an ecosystem where the arts can perform. And that is what they really need to be remembered for. We come to the last uh, few red couple of slides, that's about it. Today, Carnatic music is all about awards. Yes, awards is a very important uh, part of our uh, of the arts world because artists thrive on recognition. There is, somebody would always say that a Carnatic audience is not a soap. That's all that they get. And it is the duty of the Carnatic artist to give that satisfaction. And I, I remember a young artist telling me, Inniki marketing customer delight the artist, the audience needs to be delighted. And with a great sense of happiness, the audience needs to go home. Similarly, the audience needs to give the artist the recognition. And this is what the titles, people refer to it very derisively. Even I have referred to it derisively in my immature past. Then as I grew older, I realized that this is a great, wonderful give and take system that exists between the Sabha and the artist. There is a lot of politics in this, but then this by itself is an elimination process. Uh, in cricket, there is a lot of politics. Why should it not be there in this? In politics, there is a lot of politics. So, why should it not be here? So, uh, here again, it's a question of elimination. Yes, if you look at it in the long list of Sangeeta Kalanidhis, there is an equally long list of those who didn't get it. But they are all still very great artists. Just because they didn't get the Kalanidhi, it doesn't lower them in any way. Kalanidhi the academy is to be faulted for it. He was not his part. He was a great artist and he will continue to remain a great artist. So, the list of, at the same time, the list of those recognized is illustrious. Similarly, the list of those recognized here is illustrious everywhere. So, this is a great ecosystem. The other is the lecture demonstration. The lecture demonstration may have begun as a negative, but today it does take music closer to people who want to know more about it. So, we have a lecture demonstration. seats, TV screens, then you know there are people who come and when you ask them, this is the So, there are uh, interesting audience reactions. But yes, the lecture demonstration is a great thing. I think it's a great step forward where, see, you can dilute the art and you can get people to come. But you can explain the art and you can get people to come. I think the lecture demonstration is the second and the more preferable method of dealing with it. Lastly, before I come to my final slide, what is our Carnatic music world without the canteen? December music season. And there again, I mean, I, I keep going back to academy for a number of things, but it cannot be denied that the academy created the history for much of what followed. So, in 1939, when academy shifted to the University Senate House for its December music performances, there were two complaints. One was that there was no bus transport to come to the beach road. Secondly, there was no hotel available in the beach road where people could go out for refreshments. 
தடுக்கி விழுந்து அதே மாதிரி ஈட்டரிஸ் பீப்புள் டு கோ அண்ட் ஈட் அண்ட் கம் பேக் இங்கே அது மாதிரி கிடையாது பீச் ரோட்டு ஸோ கே வி கிருஷ்ணசுவாமி ஐயர் ஹூ வாஸ் தென் த பிரசிடென்ட் ஆஃப் த அகாடமி ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் ஃபார் பஸ் டிரான்ஸ்போர்ட் தமிழ் இசை சங்கம் லேட்டர் ஆன் வுட் டூ த சேம் ஸோ இன் ஃபேக்ட் இஃப் யூ ரீட் த நியூஸ் பேப்பர் அட்வர்டைஸ்மெண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த நைன்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டிஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் பஸ் அரேஞ்ச்மெண்ட்ஸ் ஹவ் பீன் மேட் ஃப்ரம் நாகேஸ்வர ராவ் பார்க் அண்ட் பனகல் பார்க் டூ பிளேசஸ் ஃப்ரம் வேர் பஸ்ஸஸ் வுட் பிக் அப் பீப்புள் டு டேக் தெம் டு தமிழ் இசை சங்கம் அண்ட் த அகாடமிஸ் லொக்கேஷன் and then drop them back in 1945 after all it as is very well known it was a rainy evening when chitur nagaya was driving by and he saw a group of people standing in a bus stop and he asked them edhuka inga enna nindrukkel they said ailapur la endu kacheri kettu thirumbi teenagar ku poga paathirukkom mala vendirukku bus varala he dropped them in his own car and that is how he decided vani mahal would come into existence so in the madri or you know and the uh, public transport is there that was one the other kv krishnamya he had decided was that canteens would now become part of the sabhas so bharat cafe and ambis cafe these became caterers to the music academy in fact in the caterers they vechi or kadaye pannidla adu or periya kadai ava avaloda behavior avaloda the attitude modalla vande krishna avar per marandu appa thore ayyar avar na academy oda first caterer அவர் அதுக்கப்புறம் கல்யாண சாப்பாடுக்கெல்லாம் கேட்டுற ரைட்டர் தட் இஸ் அ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஸ்டோரி தென் பி ஹேட் காசி ஹல்வா கிருஷ்ணமூர்த்தி ஹூ வாஸ் எம் எஸ் சுப்புலட்சுமி ஸ்கூக் அண்ட் ஹூ வாஸ் நோன் ஃபார் காசி ஹல்வா சில பொல்லாத வித்வான்லாம் தனியா வருத்தனத்தை கரெக்டாக அந்த காசி ஹல்வா ரெடியாக டைம்ல விட்டுடுவா சோ ஆடியன்ஸ் கேன் கோ அண்ட் பை த காசி ஹல்வா அண்ட் தென் கம் பேக் ஆஃப்டர் தி ஹெட் ஃபீஸ்டட் ஆன் இட் பட் இன் மை ஒப்பீனியன் த ஃபைனஸ்ட் கேன்டீன் ஃபார் ஆல் டைம் வாஸ் ஞானாம்பிகா ஜெயராமன் அண்ட் அட் நாரதநாதன் இதுல டவுட்டே கிடையாது அது ஒரு வேர்ல்ட் அந்த ஒரு சந்தோஷம் அந்த ஒரு வேர்ல்ட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ காண்ட் இஸ் நோ மோர் பட் அந்த பாயிண்ட் இஸ் தே மேட் ஈட்டிங் அ செலிப்ரேஷன் உள்ள பாட்டு செலிப்ரேஷனா இருக்கலாம் வெளியில வந்து சாப்பாடு செலிப்ரேஷன் அந்த உள்ள போன உடனே அவ எல்லாரும் அந்த குண்டாப்பா நல்லா சாப்பிட்டவாடா இருப்பா அவரோட குடும்பமே ஒரு நல்ல ஒரு இப்ப போஷன் போஷன் எல்லாரும் பேசிட்டு இருக்கோம் ஒரு போஷாக்கான குடும்பம் அது வந்த உடனே சார் என்ன சாப்பிடுறேன் இல்லை இன்னைக்கு கொஞ்சம் வயது சரியா பரவாயில்ல தயிர் சாதம் சாப்பிடுவோம் அது கூட வேப்பலை கட்டி பண்ணி வச்சிருக்கோம் இப்படி ஆரம்பிப்பா அப்புறம் ஒரு மசாலா தோசா ட்ரை பண்றீங்களா நமக்கு அதுக்கப்புறமா அப்புறம் ஒரு கூழுக ட்ரை பண்ணுங்கோ பூரியை ட்ரை பண்ணுங்கோ இதை ட்ரை பண்ணுங்கோ அதை ட்ரை பண்ணுங்கோ காஃபியை சாப்பிடுங்கோ டெசர்ட்டை சாப்பிடுங்கோ என்னெல்லாமோ சாப்பிட்டு வெளியில வச்சு அவரோட டாட்டர் அங்கே உட்காந்துட்டு இருப்பா அவர் முன்னாடி முறுக்கு தட்டை சீட ரவாடு எடுக்கிற அதெல்லாம் ஒரு டப்பா டப்பாவா இருக்கும் தென் ஜெயராம் ஐயர் வந்து சாட்சாத் ஞானானந்த கிரி மாதிரியே உட்காந்துட்டு இருப்பார் கால் மேல காலை போட்டுட்டு ஆரஞ்சு கலர்ல துணியை கட்டிட்டு யூ ஆல்மோஸ்ட் வென் டு ஹிம் ஃபார் சம் பிலோசாபிக்கல் எக்ஸ்பிளேஷன் அப்பதான் பில்லு வச்சு நின்று இருப்பார் அவர் அந்த பில் எல்லாம் வந்து ஒரு அது ஒரு மாதிரி ஒரு யூகத் யூகத்துல நடக்கும் ஐ டோன்ட் நோ ஹவு தனக்கு பட் ஹி வாஸ் போஜன பிரம அண்ட் வாஸ் அ செலிப்ரேஷன் ஆனா அந்த இதுல என்னன்னா கம்யூனிட்டி இன் ஜார்ஜ் டவுன் which even today thinks that the music academy naradagana sabha and all have a food festival in december avalukku ange ulla kacheri nadakkaradala onnume adu oru porute kedaiyadhu december la ange edho nadakkaradhu so ange saapadu nanna kedaiyadhu so indha oru manikku ellarum mukkada potundu appra vandu ellarum car la padapadaya ulla vandu erangi they go left they will never go straight into the hall ange poi nanna saapuva and adukapra enna pannuvaana they form a whatsapp group by december beginning and they get the caterer also in it and they begin dictating menus to him aaj ye banaiye etc etc and that and that is how that that world thrives some of them have now become sharp they are very sharp people you don't need to tell them about sharpness but ipo ava and they have gone to a different level they know that after eating if you go into the main hall there is air conditioning and there is some soothing music going on so nanna one hour they all come and they sleep they listen they go but we you know me with my mylapore superiority i laugh at it but mark my words there will come a day when there will be an audience for carnatic music from that group ipdi da konnu vandom ipdi da we brought people in free kacheri kudutom people invite pannino ulle vanda and the artist nanna paadrarae nu solittu avar ticket kacheri kettu appra pona adhe mari america la irukrava inge vandu indha kacheri kettuttu da america la idha kacheri kala invite pandra ivaala there is a whole system that thrives by this december and by the sabha culture some day there will be people after all there was a pitambar desai who played the mridangam there was a krishna sami lala ramakrishna lala who ran the mailapur sangeetha sabha let's not forget all there are people 
there will come a day when they will listen so nammalla kolangala irundapodu oruthukkume kacheri ponaangiradhu pidikkadhu paati thara thara ezhuthu poi okkathi chiduvaanga paara paadra and adha vandu rama enna nu kandupidikkanum appo da namakku edhavadhu book la kirikkin irukum namakku poi okkaranum enna romba kashtama irukum book e thookin povom anga poi draw pannin irukum appra oru nerukku thodaila oru killu vidum katha mudiyadhu andha time la avu sri ranjani paadra paar eppadi paadra paar vasantha kumari that is how we realized that is how we acquired our basic knowledge by being enticed into the sabha and that is how we learned and i'm sure this will also happen the canteen by itself will provide audiences in future last uh, slide before i finish the sabha itself has given rise to a fringe elements as i like to call them the role of critics the role of office bearers i have covered all that the benefits also i spoke about you know the world at large western scholars coming to present western scholars studying our music 1930 the first lecture demonstrations of the music academy had a foreigner mrs stan harding she had been arrested in russia for being a spy she had been released and she had come to madras to listen to the music and dance lecture demonstrations that year from then on we have had a whole lot of right john higgins has been there we have had so many others uh, i mean uh, i am off hand i am unable to uh, you know I, my mind fails suddenly and i am not able to think of all the names that i knew personally myself but there have been several so that has been one the other is that audiences our own indian audiences have come from abroad and as i said earlier they have invited our artists to go there and perform artists have benefited from that the whole uh, new world has opened up for them there are negatives there is no doubt about it but it is very easy to criticize anything and then condemn it we can only hope to improve as we go along perhaps the one thing that i would always earnestly request that we as audiences ought to change is the audience bad behavior when it comes to concerts it is it's our responsibility the, there, there is only so much that an organizer can do or an artist can do ishtathukku kacheri nadure elindhu velila por திரும்பி வருது அப்புறம் அந்த சாப்பாடை வந்து கர் 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 கர்னு ஒரு பாப்பட் மாதிரி ஒரு பிளாஸ்டிக் கவர் உள்ள வச்சுட்டு அதை பர் பர் பர்னு திறந்து அந்த டைம்ல பல பல சத்தங்களோடையும் பல சௌகந்திகமான வாசனைகளோடும் எல்லா இடத்துலயும் வெங்காய வாசனை எல்லாம் பரவின்னு இருக்கிற மாதிரி ஒரு என்க்ளோஸ்ட் ஹால்ல பின்னாடி உட்காந்துட்டு அவசர அவசர அவசரமா சாப்பிடுறது ரெண்டாவது பாட்டு ஆரம்பிக்கச்சே பாத்ரூமுக்கு போறது எதுக்காக இது முன்னாடி பத்து நிமிஷம் முன்னாடி பாத்ரூம் போயிட்டு வந்து இந்த கச்சேரியில வந்து உட்காந்து இருக்கலாம் செல்போம் that is the i think perhaps is the pain of the carnatic music world in several ways one is the ringing silent la poda theriya innu silent la poda theriyada va irukka mudiyadhu i'm sure we have been having the cell phones now for more than 15 years or whatever it is that is one the other is this answering the call from the auditorium na kacheri la irukken அதுக்கப்புறம் வந்து அவளுக்கு அங்கே காதலை விழாது பிகாஸ் இங்கே வந்து வால்யூம் வால்யூம் வால்யூம்னு அது ஒரு தனி கச்சேரி இங்கேருந்து நடந்துட்டு இருக்குமே ஸோ அதனால வந்து ஆ நான் கச்சேரியில் இருக்கேன் அப்படின்னு ஒரு பக்கத்தில் ஒரு நூறு ரோக்கு கேட்குற மாதிரி ஒரு அலறல் பால அடுப்பு மேல தானே வச்சிருக்கேன் சாவிய ட்ராவலில் வச்சிருக்கேன் இதெல்லாம் வை ஐ ஜஸ்ட் கான் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தட் லேக் ஆஃப் டிசிப்ளின் தட் ஹஸ் கம் அண்ட் ஐ ஆல்சோ டோன்ட் ஐ மீன் ஐ ஆம் நாட் கம்ஃபர்டபுள் வித் ஐ ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஹவ் டோல் மீ தட் ஏ பிகம் இன்டிஃபரெண்ட் டு இட் one is the holding up of the phone and recording the uh, whole thing and then trying to put it up on social media nobody benefits from this because it's a one dimensional non stereo mono recording which is off adha vandu social media la potu oru prayojanam kediyadhu on the other hand the artists themselves will have good quality recordings which they will then release later the other thing is it is destroying this fragile ecosystem by discouraging people to come because we are sharing the music from here they don't buy the tickets they don't come here they are enjoy they are trying to listen to that music idu iniki record pannittu naalaik ad memory space occupy pannirundhu solli delete pannittu idu pannama irukala that is the uh, other uh, and i think it's that basic courtesy that we need to give the artist the third is continuously looking into the phone while the concert is going on surely you know that person who are those people who are seated there how would it be if we went to their house and we began to speak to them and they said hmm ah ah hmm ah 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 so if this this is insulting that uh, particular uh, the, and they are all great artists the carnatic music is i think uh, somebody once told me there is no profession 
where sacrifice is not involved. If you want to succeed, you have to sacrifice hugely. I would say that this is tougher than most other professions. Having come to see the Carnatic music world up close, I feel that you require enormous guts and staying power to become a Carnatic musician. Because your fame is ephemeral. And that can destroy a career. Secondly, critics, most critics, where is a critic who is unbiased? All critics have been biased from the time it started in the 1900s. Everybody has got their own axe to grind and to praise one and to condemn the other. Thirdly, they have to lead lives in a very insecure world. Where is there? Is there a pension? Is there a medical insurance for the musician? There is nothing. It's all performance income. At the end of the day, if they don't perform, they don't get anything. In spite of all this, they make that sacrifice and they come and they present and they have to present art of very high quality because there are others who are walling, wanting to catch up. But every time there is a younger and better artist who is coming along, you've got to be running harder and harder and harder to stay in the same position. I think this is the least that we can do to give them that respect. So the Sabha, in my opinion, has in many ways contributed to that negative world because in a temple, there was no question of coming and going. There was a floating population and then there was a core population. But in an open environment, you don't mind it because Pinadi etc. it will happen. But in an enclosed atmosphere, it jars hugely on the artist. The other thing is the, I think, and I don't have an answer for this, is the treatment of the Veena and the Nagaswaram. Both have become casualties because of the Sabha culture. The Nagaswaram, because it was a strident outdoor instrument, meant to be enjoyed that way, not to be used with artificial amplification, but that's a very complicated history that I will not go into. We need to satisfactorily answer this question of what can be done to creatively present the Nagaswara. The other end is the Veena, which is such a sensitive instrument that it cannot thrive in this world of amplification with all this artificial collar mics and this mic and contact mic and all that being provided. The distortion of the Veena. Again, I don't have an answer for it, but I'm just placing this issue in front of the audience that has come here today. Maybe somebody will have an answer. So these are all some of the questions. And now lastly, in the last two years, the basic business model of the Sabha. Where do we go from here? Today, the virtual concert has come into existence. And uh, the audience is asking questions like link up to trailer, zoom le dhane pada parel. So, free up oedumaa apdeengir oru periyya kavale that has, uh, you know, that has come to grip the world as to, the world now I am talking about this Carnatic music world. We have all thrived on our venues. This has had a history by itself. This has got an atmosphere by itself. Uh, I always uh, finish my heritage walk in the Music Academy with a quote from Margaret Thatcher. When uh, uh, a, a documentary was made on Downing Street, she was given the last line because she was then the Prime Minister. And she says, there are other residences for heads of state which are much bigger than this. But we have all the history. So, and the Madri, venues like Vani Mahal, venues like Tamil Say Sangam, the Music Academy, these are all venues with a lot of atmosphere and history that has been built into them. What will happen to this world? Suppose this world becomes unimportant to the Carnatic music world. If there exists a parallel world in the virtual space, what will happen to these? These are all questions that we need to ask ourselves and to see where this Sabha culture will go. I have great confidence that it will reinvent itself in one form or the other. It has already done that in the last year during the December Music Festival. But there are several questions that remain unanswered in that virtual world. I am not going to list them out today. I will leave you all to ponder over what those unanswered questions can be. And I will now take your leave. Thank you very much for having given me a patient hearing for one and a half hours on this subject. Thank you. I sincerely thank Sri Ram for readily accepting to come and do thank this you. program for us. He has 
also agreed to do a program during our 75th year celebration on the life history of Nagaya. So please be here, in my opinion, really deserves commemoration here. Uh, we propose to hold a leg dem program every month. I request the audience to encourage us by turning up in large numbers. Thank you very much.